I'm alive, I say I don't. Hello, ladies, and welcome to another episode of Cooking for Your Man. Today's recipe is the perfect pot roast. But before we get started, I'm going to show you guys what I use to kick odor in the butt when I'm cooking. I always use my Sweet Heat Orange and Guava Scented Wax Melt. They are also available in another scent called Get the Funk Out. But what's special about these milks is that they are created with a special smoking odor and lemonade formula. Um, they are perfect for getting rid of unwanted food odors when you're cooking, especially when you're frying fish or dealing with any other smelly foods. They can be purchased from Sweet Heat at www.mysweetheat.etsy.com. The link will be below. Thank you guys so much. Now that we got that out the way, let's get to the ingredients that you will need for this recipe first of all if you like me i like to middle out when i'm cooking um i have me a nice little cocktail composed of a little pineapple and orange juice and a little peach syrup but um that's not required but that's what i use to help me cook those perfect meals lady anyway that is optional not required what you need for this recipe is um seasonings for your roast Whichever you prefer, that's fine. But when I'm seasoning, I usually use, especially meat or beef, I usually use a certain type of seasonings. Um, I use Cavendish Greek seasoning, black pepper, Larry's garlic salt. Ooh, the best garlic salt in the world. Um, you're going to need some chicken broth. I got the Great Value brand because the brand really does not matter with this recipe. You're going to need... Some baby carrots or some fresh carrots chopped up. It doesn't matter. Whichever you prefer. You're going to need one bell pepper and a half an onion roughly chopped. They don't have to be perfect dices or whatever. Just roughly chop them for the roast. Also in my recipe, I'm going to be using these little potatoes from the Little Potato Company. I saw these at the store today when I was looking for regular potatoes. I will let you guys know how these come out in the end of the recipe. I thought they would be perfect. So we're going to be using these potatoes today instead of a regular Idaho russet or whatever potato. All right. And also you're going to need a chuck roast or whichever cuts or roast that you prefer. I love the, cut, the chuck roast because of the perfect marbling of the fat that goes throughout the meat. I like my meat to be nice and juicy when it's done. I do not like the roast that's completely lean without the fat. But if you prefer that, that's perfect. It's your choice. Um, to get started, go ahead and preheat your oven to 350. And before you begin this recipe, a few hours in advance, you want to marinate your meat. You can also do this the night before. Mine's has been marinating for approximately three hours. It was marinated in a half a box of the chicken broth. Um, I seasoned my meat really well with garlic salt, black pepper, and the Greek seasoning. Once I got it seasoned, I put the roast in a bag, a Ziploc bag, and I massage that seasoning and that chicken broth until that roast really well. Got it nice and incorporated, and I popped it in the refrigerator for about three hours, and this is the result. Okay, ladies, we are ready to get started. Before we get started, I've removed my chuck roast um, from the Ziploc bag, and what I've done is cut it in half so it will fit in my skillet when I'm browning it. I always brown my chuck roast before I put it in the oven. But before I brown it, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more seasoning to each side of my two portions of meat. A little garlic salt and a little bit more black pepper. The key to a perfect pot roast is the season, ladies. Just like with our perfect meatloaf, well, our Mighty Meatloaf recipe, the seasoning is what made that recipe. And don't worry about it getting too salty. With this thick cut of meat, I promise you, you guys, it will not be too salty. For your taste so go ahead and add a little bit more black pepper and garlic salt to your meat in a skillet or pan 
you want to add a few tablespoons of um, vegetable oil or olive oil, whichever you prefer. You don't need that much because you're just browning your meat. Some people like to add flour to their meat before browning. In this situation, I'm not because I'm not making gravy, so I do not need that thickness. I'm just going to make a standard pot roast without the gravy. And that marinade that you had in your Ziploc, ladies, please do not throw it away. We will be adding that back to the pot roast. Now that our oil is nice and hot, we're going to go ahead and put our chuck roast in the pan. And we're going to brown it on each side for about two or three minutes. You're not cooking this thoroughly or all the way through. You're just browning it for about two or three minutes on each side. Okay, ladies, we have our meat nice and brown. Now we're going to take those veggies that we sliced earlier and go ahead and toss them in that skillet that you just removed that meat from. When you remove your meat from the uh, skillet, set it aside on a plate. Don't set it in your pan yet. It just makes it easier to get all the vegetables in there first. And you're going to brown your vegetables till they're nice and caramelized. Now that our vegetables are browning, we're going to go ahead and add all the other ingredients to our pot roast pan. These potatoes on the package say microwave ready, but we are not putting them in the microwave. It also came with a little spice packet. Girl, what we're going to do with this seasoning is add it to our pot roast. Because we don't need it for the potatoes, honey. The potatoes going in the pan with the roast. So, grab your potatoes. Open them babies up. Go ahead and dump them in your pan that you're going to be cooking your pot roast in. Y'all, my pan is not dirty. That is the seasoning from my meat from earlier. So don't be like, ooh, girl, my pan's so dirty. No, y'all, that's just the seasoning, okay? Go ahead and add your potatoes. And I'm going to add my whole bag of carrots. Because my daughter my son, they love carrots. I bet y'all wonder why. I thought they were cooking for your man. Well, really, it's cooking for your family or whoever you want to cook for. Add your carrots. Oh, I left one in the bag. I'm going to put that one in there, too. Okay. Once you got your carrots and potatoes added to your pans, lady, go ahead and add your roast in. Make a little spot for your roast. Clean out a little spot. Scoot all your veggies to the side. And then pop your roast right on in there with those veggies. Y'all, this smells so good. Oh my goodness. All right. Now once your veggies are done, these have been cooking for about two minutes, two or three minutes. Go ahead and scoop them out. Y'all, caramelized vegetables make everything taste delicious. I could have just threw these in there, but I do notice a difference. Take the extra step and caramelize those veggies, and you won't be disappointed. All right, now that you got your roast in there, ladies, you remember that pack of uh, seasoning that we said shall not go to waste that came out of those potatoes? Go ahead and sprinkle it on there. Sprinkle it all over your pot roast mixture. Then grab that chicken broth that we had, that roast marinating in. Go ahead and pull that on there. And pour the remaining chicken broth in the pan. Ooh. Don't pour it on your stove. <laughs> Don't do like me and pour, and pour it on your stove. Eye. Don't do that. Y'all probably wondering why I'm using chicken broth for some of the beginner cooks. Using water does not add flavor to your pot roast. It only waters it out and takes away from the seasoning. Okay, once you got your chicken broth in there, give everything a good little stir to make sure that it's nice and distributed throughout your pan. Um, I'm cooking my pan in my lovely lovely pot roast pan my mama gave me y'all she oh lord this is the best thing she ever gave me 
but you can cook it in a roasting bag. Some people prefer to cook it in a roasting bag. It's perfectly okay. I just do not like to deal with roasting bags. Once you get everything in your pan, go ahead and put your top on there or foil or whatever you're using and pop that baby in the oven. Woohoo, ladies, our pot roast is finally done. It has been in the oven on 350 for approximately three hours. You want to cook your roast for three hours to three and a half hours until it's nice and tender. Um, I went ahead and plated it up. I added a little partially flaked to garnish. Um, your man is going to love you for that one. For this one, I can't, it's, there's nothing more that I can say. I hope that you all enjoy. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Cooking for Your Man. Don't forget to take the time to subscribe to my channel for more awesome videos to come. Y'all have a great night.